Okay. Hey, how's it going everyone and welcome to the Kingdom Faith Outdoors channel. My, my name is Miguel Fuentes and today is Friday and I'm going to be pre-recording for Sunday service, sorry, Saturday service. And um, so today we're going to get into Ezekiel chapter 37 through 40 today. And before we get started, let's go ahead and pray first. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just uh, thank the Lord for today. Thank the Lord for all that you've done, Lord. Lord, you're holy, mighty, worthy to be praised. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the time together as the body of Christ. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your love and peace. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Let's get to it. Let's get into the Word. Chapter 37. Oh, come on. Come on, come on. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try this game. Do it a minute. Nope, it's not working. I don't know what's going on. The devil is a liar. I just know that. Come on. May as well go to the uh, website. For time's sake, so and skill three seven. <sighs> Chapter 37 The hand of the Lord came upon me, and brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, 
Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you, and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man. And say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, As for you, son of man, take a stick for yourself, and write on it, For Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write on it, For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Then join them one to another for yourself into one stick, and they will become one in your hand. And when the children of your people speak to you, saying, Will you not show us what you mean by these? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his companions, and I will join them with it, with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they will be one in my hand. And the sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. Then say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. They shall not defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them. Then they shall be my people, and I will be their God. David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes, and do them. Then they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwelt. And they shall dwell there, they, their children, and their children's children, forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever.
Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The nations also will know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. Chapter 37 Chapter 38 Sorry. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia and Libya are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Goma and all its troops, the house of Togama from the far north and all its troops, many people are with you. Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be visited. In the latter years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword, and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. You will ascend coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. Thus says the Lord God, On that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people, who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates, to take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited and against the people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods, who dwell in the midst of the land. Sheba, Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish and all their young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, Thus says the Lord God, On that day when my people Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place, out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land, so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you, O Gog, before their eyes. Thus says the Lord God, are you he of whom I have spoken in former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied for years in those days that I would bring you against them? And it will come to pass at the same time when Gog comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken, Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth, shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, 
the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Chapter 39 Chapter 39 And you, son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and I will turn you around and lead you on, bringing you up from the far north, and bring you against the mountains of Israel. Then I will knock the bow out of your left hand, and cause the arrows to fall out of your right hand. You shall fall upon the mountains of Israel, you and all your troops and the peoples who are with you. I will give you to birds of prey of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. You shall fall on the open field, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. And I will send fire on Magog, and on those who live in security in the coastlands. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. Then those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and bucklers, the bows and arrows, the javelins and spears. And they will make fires with them for seven years. They will not take wood from the field, nor cut down any from the forests, because they will make fires with the weapons. And they will plunder those who plundered them, and pillage those who pillaged them, says the Lord God. It will come to pass in that day, that I will give Gog a burial place there in Israel, the valley of those who pass by east of the sea. And it will obstruct travellers, because there they will bury Gog and all his multitude. Therefore they will call it, the valley of Haman Gog. For seven months the house of Israel will be burying them, in order to cleanse the land. Indeed, all the people of the land will be burying, and they will gain renown for it on the day that I am glorified, says the Lord God. They will set apart men regularly employed, with the help of a search party, to pass through the land and bury those bodies remaining on the ground in order to cleanse it. At the end of seven months, they will make a search. The search party will pass through the land, and when anyone sees a man's bone, he shall set up a marker by it, till the buriers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. The name of the city will also be Hermona. Thus they shall cleanse the land. And as for you, son of man, Thus says the Lord God. Speak to every sort of bird and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come. Gather together from all sides to my sacrificial meal which I am sacrificing for you. A great sacrificial meal on the mountains of Israel. That you may eat flesh and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty. Drink the blood of the princes of the earth. Of rams and lambs of goats and bulls, all of them fatlings of Bashan. You shall eat fat till you are full, and drink blood till you are drunk, 
at my sacrificial meal which I am sacrificing for you. You shall be filled at my table with horses and riders, with mighty men and with all the men of war, says the Lord God. I will set my glory among the nations. All the nations shall see my judgment which I have executed, and my hand which I have laid on them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward. The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Because they were unfaithful to me, therefore I hid my face from them. I gave them into the hand of their enemies, and they all fell by the sword. According to their uncleanness, and according to their transgressions, I have dealt with them, and hidden my face from them. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Now I will bring back the captives of Jacob, and have mercy on the whole house of Israel. And I will be jealous for my holy name, after they have borne their shame, and all their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me. When they dwelt safely in their own land, and no one made them afraid. When I have brought them back from the peoples, and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and I am hallowed in them, in the sight of many nations, then they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who sent them into captivity among the nations, but also brought them back to their land, and left none of them captive any longer. And I will not hide my face from them any more, for I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord God. Amen. All right, that's chapter thirty nine. And you, son of man, prophet, prophesy against God, Gog, and say, Thus says. Give me a sec. Come on, are you kidding me right now?
Chapter 40. There you go. In the 25th year of our captivity, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year after the city was captured, on the very same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he took me there. In the visions of God, he took me into the land of Israel and set me on a very high mountain. On it, toward the south, was something like the structure of a city. He took me there, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of bronze. He had a line of flax and a measuring rod in his hand, and he stood in the gateway. And the man said to me, Son of man, look with your eyes and hear with your ears, and fix your mind on everything I show you. For you were brought here, so that I might show them to you. Declare to the house of Israel everything you see. Now there was a wall all around the outside of the temple. In the man's hand was a measuring rod six cubits long, each being a cubit and a handbreadth. And he measured the width of the wall structure one rod, and the height one rod. Then he went to the gateway which faced east, and he went up its stairs and measured the threshold of the gateway, which was one rod wide, and the other threshold was one rod wide. Each gate chamber was one rod long and one rod wide. Between the gate chambers was a space of five cubits, and the threshold of the gateway by the vestibule of the inside gate was one rod. He also measured the vestibule of the inside gate, one rod. Then he measured the vestibule of the gateway, eight cubits, and the gate posts, two cubits. The vestibule of the gate was on the inside. In the eastern gateway were three gate chambers on one side and three on the other. The three were all the same size. Also, the gate posts were of the same size on this side and that side. He measured the width of the entrance to the gateway, 10 cubits, and the length of the gate, 13 cubits. There was a space in front of the gate chambers, one cubit on this side and one cubit on that side. The gate chambers were six cubits on this side and six cubits on that side. Then he measured the gateway from the roof of one gate chamber to the roof of the other. The width was 25 cubits, as door faces door. He measured the gate posts, 60 cubits high, and the court all around the gateway extended to the gate post. From the front of the entrance gate to the front of the vestibule of the inner gate was 50 cubits. There were beveled window frames in the gate chambers and in their intervening archways on the inside of the gateway all around, and likewise in the vestibules. There were windows all around on the inside, and on each gatepost were palm trees. Then he brought me into the outer court, and there were chambers and a pavement made all around the court. Thirty chambers faced the pavement. The pavement was by the side of the gateways, corresponding to the length of the gateways. This was the lower pavement. Then he measured the width from the front of the lower gateway to the front of the inner court exterior, 100 cubits toward the east and the north. On the outer court was also a gateway facing north, and he measured its length and its width. Its gate chambers, three on this side and three on that side, its gate posts and its archways had the same measurements as the first gate. Its length was 50 cubits and its width 25 cubits. Its windows and those of its archways and also its palm trees had the same measurements as the gateway facing east. It was ascended by seven steps and its archway was in front of it. A gate of the inner court was opposite the northern gateway just as the eastern gateway. And he measured from gateway to gateway 100 cubits. After that, he brought me toward the south, 
and there, a gateway was facing south. And he measured its gateposts and archways according to these same measurements. There were windows in it, and in its archways all around like those windows. Its length was 50 cubits, and its width 25 cubits. Seven steps led up to it, and its archway was in front of them, and it had palm trees on its gateposts, one on this side and one on that side. There was also a gateway on the inner court facing south. And he measured from gateway to gateway toward the south, 100 cubits. Then he brought me to the inner court through the southern gateway. He measured the southern gateway according to these same measurements. Also its gate chambers, its gate posts, and its archways were according to these same measurements. There were windows in it, and in its archways all around. It was 50 cubits long, and 25 cubits wide. There were archways all around, 25 cubits long and 5 cubits wide. Its archways faced the outer court. Palm trees were on its gateposts, and going up to it were eight steps. And he brought me into the inner court facing east. He measured the gateway according to these same measurements. Also its gate chambers, its gateposts, and its archways were according to these same measurements. And there were windows in it, and in its archways all around. It was 50 cubits long, and 25 cubits wide. Its archways faced the outer court, and palm trees were on its gateposts on this side and on that side, and going up to it were eight steps. Then he brought me to the north gateway and measured it according to these same measurements. Also its gate chambers, its gate posts, and its archways. It had windows all around. Its length was 50 cubits, and its width 25 cubits. Its gate posts faced the outer court. Palm trees were on its gate posts on this side and on that side, and going up to it were eight steps. There was a chamber, and its entrance by the gate posts of the gateway, where they washed the burnt offering. In the vestibule of the gateway were two tables on this side and two tables on that side, on which to slay the burnt offering, the sin offering, and the trespass offering. At the outer side of the vestibule, as one goes up to the entrance of the northern gateway, were two tables. And on the other side of the vestibule of the gateway were two tables. Four tables were on this side and four tables on that side, by the side of the gateway eight tables, on which they slaughtered the sacrifices. There were also four tables of hewn stone for the burnt offering, one cubit and a half long, one cubit and a half wide, and one cubit high. On these, they laid the instruments with which they slaughtered the burnt offering and the sacrifice. Inside were hooks, a handbreadth wide, fastened all around, and the flesh of the sacrifices was on the tables. Outside the inner gate were the chambers for the singers in the inner court, one facing south at the side of the northern gateway, and the other facing north at the side of the southern gateway. Then he said to me, This chamber which faces south is for the priests who have charge of the temple. The chamber which faces north is for the priests who have charge of the altar. These are the sons of Zadok, from the sons of Levi, who come near the Lord to minister to him. And he measured the court, one hundred cubits long and one hundred cubits wide, four square. The altar was in front of the temple. Then he brought me to the vestibule of the temple and measured the doorposts of the vestibule, five cubits on this side and five cubits on that side. And the width of the gateway was three cubits on this side and three cubits on that side. The length of the vestibule was twenty cubits, and the width eleven cubits. And by the steps which led up to it, there were pillars by the doorposts, one on this side and another on that side. All right.
right. Uh, this is kind of a long one, but um, <clears throat> so what do we have here? First thing, first thing, uh, God commanded Ezekiel to speak to to the dry bone to be alive again, and it it, it was a pretty much a picture of what we are, you know. You know we, you know we, we say we love Christ, but in, but inwardly we're we're like dead man bones. But when when God told Ezekiel about this, you know it, it brings up the spirit of God that bring that that really gave us the breath of life, you know, and 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 just I man, it's just it's just amazing. Um, Secondly, uh, God's uh, uh, army is destroyed, and then in uh, then the third part, I want to say that Ezekiel had a vision about the new city and a new temple, and um, th this was a very, very interesting part of Ezekiel, and I know uh, next week we'll get into Ezekiel chapter 41 to 44. As we conclude this this book uh, in the near future, so I hope you guys enjoyed the sermon. I know you know it's kind of kind of long, but God is good. You know, God has has his has his uh, intention, and uh, we thank you for watching this video. And you know, I'm a bit tired, and I gotta get up early in the morning tomorrow to go back to work. And so I'm excited. So may God bless you, may God keep you, and I'll see you guys again next time.